Hey there and welcome back. I'm Melissa Muir. Wanted to introduce you guys to another new tool that is in my studio. Now it's something that a lot of jewelers are going to have, but it's not something I've had a lot of experience with. And like I said, it is new in my studio. And this today is a ring bender stretcher reducer. So it's actually three different tools in one. Now this particular model happens to be made by Durston and I wanted to show you really quickly how to use it. At first I was kind of like, I'm not quite sure what you do with it, but it's actually kind of a fun tool once you start to play with it. And if you ever really want to test your seams on a ring, this baby will do it for you. <laughs> so let's take a look now. Now the angle that you're at, you don't actually see all three parts. You can see here we've got the ring stretcher and we also have the ring reducer. And over here on the side, we actually have the bender. Now one thing you should keep in mind is that this is for band style rings only. I would also avoid anything that has a stone. So whether you've got a channel set, a flush set, bead set, anything like that, don't use this tool. There are other ways of resizing those rings. But what we do have is something that will reduce and stretch a simple band. So what I did was I took some time here really quickly and I took some six gauge copper. And first thing I did was roll it down a little bit in my rolling mill. First, I rolled it lengthwise so that I elongated my wire. I think I started off with about four inches and I took that out to about five, five and a half inches. Next, I annealed this, good quench pickle, and then I came back to the rolling mill and I reduced it further. Then once I had that all done, then I formed it into a ring, soldered it closed, and like I said, we're about to test these seams. So first, let's talk a little bit about how to get it to the ring shape. Once we've gone through and we've got the wire stock the way we want it, we have our thick, we've cut it to size, now let's bend it around. And to do that, we're actually going to use the ring bender portion. Now to use this ring bender portion, we actually have two different dies. And this should look something similar to tools that you've seen for eons in different metal studios. So this particular part is not new, but it is new on this this particular setup where we have everything all together. So we have two different dies. One is you can see that we've got kind of this convex surface and that is so that you can do stock that maybe is like a comfort fit or a half round band. And then the other portion is going to be for using a flat stock, which is what I have for this particular demonstration. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert my die into position. Now I'm going to raise up this little bar here and that's what's going to allow me to open and close and move this down. Then I want to tighten this little box into place. And so there are some little screws here that you can go ahead and tighten that and get it into position. The next thing I'm going to do is begin to feed this into the wire bender and I'll just pull that handle and what's going to happen is it's going to start to curve or bend our metal. Now in this case, if I go on this small one, I'm going to get a very small ring and I actually need it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm actually going to feed this into one of the larger benders. And again, just repeat that process and continue to do my bending. You want to do this in little increments. And now you can see here that my ring is smaller than the shape that I have been bending on. If I want to close this down, all I need to do is move this to the next smaller depression. And you may need to remove your bender here or the die just to get that into position first. There we go. And I'm going to tighten this back up. And what I'm going to do is use this to tighten this back up. Now, before I do any th reducing or stretching, I want to have a good starting point. So here I have a ring mandrel. Now, because I'm in the US, my measurement goes from one to 16. But, you know, other ring mandrels for different parts of the world are also going to be marked for whatever. But the thing is, is that we want to know where we're starting. So here, it looks like I'm starting at about a six and a half. And let's say that we want to reduce this. 
Now, in order to reduce this, I'm going to use the reducing plate. So what I'm going to do is just kind of pull this ba handle back and it pulls the plunger up here for this and I'm able to remove this. Now, you'll see that we've got a series of holes and they are each tapered. Well, on the flip side, there's also another series of holes again that are tapered. They are different on either side. So that gives you quite a few different options as far as using this. And what I want to do is I want to find a hole that my ring fits into, not, not perfectly, not exactly. I don't want to be too low. I don't want to be too high. But what I do want is I want my ring to at least fit into this so that I can have it where it sits just above the metal. Okay, and you want to get that as flat as possible. And then I'm going to place it back into position. And I'm going to rotate this around so that it sits underneath this flat pusher. And what I'm going to do then is take this and I'm going to bend my arm down. And what's going to happen, and I'm going to rotate this around, is my ring is going to be pushed into that depression. Now, what's going to happen also, because we're reducing and we're pushing into a cone-like surface or cone-like tubing, it's actually going to round my ring a little bit. So we don't want to have to reduce too much because it will change the shape of this ring. All right, so I've got this back into position. It's about as flat as I'm going to get that. Once again, I'm going to rotate this around and give a push. And now let's see where we are. I'm going to pull this ring out. I can see that I have definitely made some movement here on my ring. I'm going to place it back on my ring mandrel. And in this case, I actually took it down a good half size because now I'm at about a size six. So now you saw that was pretty easy to do that reducing. Now, because this is my filming station, this is not permanently mounted. I've got this mounted on here with a couple of C-clamps. But whatever you do, you want to make certain that you've got this mounted so that you can go ahead and give some force to this. Now, to tell you guys, I did not use a whole lot of pressure. One, I'm sitting at kind of an awkward angle because I am filming, and two, it doesn't really require a whole lot. Now, the more pressure you put on this, the more movement your metal is going to have. Another thing to keep in mind is that you should always have your metal annealed when you're doing this. If you don't, there's a chance that your metal might become brittle and it's more prone to breakage. So now that we've got the reducing done, let's try stretching a little bit. So once again, I have my ring blank here and we're gonna see where we sit. And on this one, I'm sitting at about six and three quarters. So I have a little ways to go on this. I'm also starting off with something fairly thick that is well annealed. To do this one, what I'm going to do is slip it onto this tapered cone here. Now, the tapered cone features six flanges that are on this, and they are held together by a spring up here. And what happens is we have this little piston or this rod that is also a cone shape, and we are going to bring that cone shape up and into these flanges that are going to push out onto the ring, thereby stretching it from the inside. Now to operate the reducer, we pulled our handle forward, but this one, we're going to be pushing that handle back. So again, I'm going to make certain that my ring is secured in place and I'm just going to give a pull. And whatever I do on one side, I need to do on the other side as well. So once again, I've got this into place and I'm going to give a pull pull it off, and now we can see if we've changed the size of this ring. And in this case, not only did I change the size of the ring, I changed it a lot. I took this up a full size. So you can see, and it, did, it was hardly any pressure at all. So you wanna be very cautious with how much pressure you put on this. A little bit can go a long way. So do a little bit, test your ring, do a little bit more, test your ring. Don't try to do it all in one go unless you're really comfortable with your tool. So now you've seen three great ways to use this tool. First, we took our ring blank and we formed it into the ring itself. Second, we reduced the ring. Simply find that right depression in the ring die itself. Give the machine a little bit of a pull to push it into that impression and you'll reduce. Thing to remember, what you do on one side, do on the other. 
And finally, we've stretched out our ring by placing it onto this upper cone that has the flanges. By giving a pull in the opposite direction, we went ahead and compressed from the inside of our ring to the out to stretch that out just a little bit. Key points to remember when using this, make sure that you're starting with annealed metal. If you're not, you do run the risk of maybe popping a seam or cracking your metal. So just be aware of that. Now another key thing to keep in mind is that what you do on one side, you should always do on the other side. Now another key point is to make sure that this is somehow secured to your surface. There are four holes in here that you can then bolt that down or as you saw in my case, because this is my filming studio and I don't want this permanently mounted right here, I went ahead and just clamped it down with some C-clamps. And one more key point is to make certain that there are no stones in this ring, nothing flush, channel, or otherwise set into this band. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about this tool. I know I'm kind of excited to have it in my studio. I've seen them before, but never really played with one. So I'm kind of excited to see what else can be done with this. Now, as far as purchasing here in the States, I know you can look at Rio Grande and also AutoFry will have those. I'll put some links down in the, the description of the video for you. If you're enjoying these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and also subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so that you get notifications for when I have new videos coming out. And believe me, there are some really good ones coming up really soon. So stay tuned, you guys, and I will see you for the next video. Have a good one.